So Robert is asking, what's the difference between loyalty, love, and respect? Is it possible to be loyal to someone you don't love? Is respecting someone a form of love in action? Is love all these three things in one? I think that's a really great question, Robert. Um, and I think each one of these things has its own merit. And Jay, you can jump in and <laughs> Jay, when you can jump in and share your thoughts. Um, I just, when I saw this, um, I couldn't help but go to a verse in Ephesians chapter five and verse 33. And it's talking about husbands and wives um, is basically the context. But what Paul says here is something really interesting. Again, in five, Ephesians 5, verse 33, and he says, Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular, talking to the husband, so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife respect her husband. And so he points out that there is a huge difference, at least within husbands and wives, for the the, hus the wife needing um, to be loved and the husband needing to be respected. And I do think that there is a big difference between loyalty, love, and respect. And I do think they can be independent of each other, but I do think love and <laughs> respect and loyalty absolutely go together as well. Um, kind of like, I'm trying to think of even, you know, like an apple has a peel, it has a, a, you know, the flesh and it has a core. Each one of those pieces are very different, but together they make something really great. Um, so uh, as far as, you know, loyalty, yeah, you can be loyal to somebody that you don't really love or you don't really respect. I mean, that's most people with their job. <laughs> they're loyal to their boss, even though they might not like the company or whatever that they work for, but they're still loyal. Um, so yeah, I think you could definitely be loyal or even to your spouse. You might not even love or respect your spouse, but you're loyal to them because you made a commitment. Um, sadly, that could be the case. Uh, and you can respect somebody that you don't love. Like there's been some people that I'm like, wow, like I respect, you know, how amazing they are at something, but I don't have a relationship with them. I don't love them. Um, I'm not loyal to them, but I have a respect for them. Or even somebody, you know, who's scary, you could have a respect, but you don't necessarily have any kind of love or loyalty. So I think that they can be separate, um, very separate things. But um, do I think respecting somebody and being loyal to them, that is definitely part of loving them um, mm -hmm. as far as love and action. But I think it can encompass a lot of other things. Uh, Jay or Wendy, any other thoughts? I mean, I, I think you're you're spot on. I mean, you cannot have you can have loyalty without love, but you cannot have love with loyalty. And yeah. this is like what the fifth commandment is, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. Like that's the heart of it. Um, you know, between a man and a wife, you know, very much loyalty. Are you going to be committed to just each other and not have any other close intimate relations with another? Um, and, and on the flip side with a relationship to God, you know, do not have any other gods before me. Do not bow down to any graven images. This again is coming back to you, your loyalty to God and God. So these 10 commandments, commandments are teaching us how to love. And so we see here, the essence A part of love is then being loyal to somebody. Um, and, and then when it comes to respect, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's sort of the same thing, right? So you could respect somebody maybe without love, but if you're going to love somebody, hopefully you'll have the respect for them too. And uh, it is interesting. Science has shown that statistically men do favor respect. That's really their more their greater core need. And mm -hmm. women need more of the love. And it is interesting how God made us that way. So it's forcing men to learn how to love. And then women, you know, will need to learn to to respect. And got, men then are actually called to the higher duty. Men are called to be in the position of Christ who loves the church. And so we often think, oh, you know, women, so you got to submit, you got to respect. And, and so it's really on you to always cave to the guy. But really, you know, Jesus always says and t showed us that leadership is service. You know, he who is greatest mm -hmm. of all is the servant of all. And likewise, so the husband, may, while the head of the household is going to, you know, his whole objective then should be how can I really serve my my wife to the fullest and love her to the fullest and benefit her and you look at the relationship between the father and the son it's the same way and you know we you have the um this false concept of you know that the father is dictatorial and whatever he wants he gets and jesus just finally goes and follows and obeys 
And yes, Jesus does just obey whatever the Father says, but it's because he knows the Father truly loves him. Mm -hmm. And he knows the Father truly is going to do what's best for anybody and everybody. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and they are in one accord and Jesus totally understands it. And he says, yes, I a hundred percent agree. I love what you're doing father. And so the father glorifies, magnifies, lifts up the son and the son glorifies, magnifies, lifts up the father. And neither one is puffing up themselves, but they are lifting up each other. And this is exactly how it should be within a marriage and in any other relationship. That's true love. And, um, and that, and and I guess that encompasses them respect. And respect flows easily when love is present. That's you know, like in a marriage relationship, it's very easy for me to respect my husband when he treats me with love. But I agree also that love has to entail respect. If you <laughs> say you love somebody but you don't actually respect them, that's really not love. Mm. It's it, you know, if if I'm in a relationship with someone and they don't respect who, you know, res respect me, I'm not going to feel loved by them. That's just the, the reality of it. So it has it's it's love, I do believe, encapsulates both respect and loyalty. Um, but yeah, I see it kind of as a higher like you could almost see it as a hierarchy where it's like love is at the top. It includes respect, which includes loyalty, but it works kind of in that order, not necessarily the other way around. And it's interesting to me that the Bible doesn't really emphasize loyalty all that much. For example, if you jump to the, the NKJV, it's not mentioned all that many times. Let's say 20 verses. And usually it's not really with respect to a relationship with God. In the New Testament, in the NKV, it only shows up twice. Um, Matthew 6, 24, where Jesus says, uh, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. Uh, and then Luke 16 is, uh, 13 is just the repeat of basically that same, that same verse. Yeah. I think too, like loyalty is kind of a, a fruit of love too. Yeah. Like, I mean, you can't help but be loyal to somebody that you love or care about. Like, like when I think about my husband, like I have a ton of respect for him um, and I love him to death. <laughs> and I can't imagine because of that, it's just loyalty is there. Like there's no, I don't even think about it because it's just part of the love I have for him and the respect, you know, how much I respect him. And so, yeah, I think it's definitely like, almost like a fruit of those things um, that just, it just, yeah, it just happens <laughs> as a natural cause. I think that's why God doesn't, you know, emphasize it as much. He's like, cause if you love me, you're, you by, you know, the off the fruit of that is just definitely going to be loyalty to him. Yeah.